it's me, Undead Viking. I'm here to do another video review for you. Uh, the game that I am reviewing today is a game called Harbor from uh, Tasty Minstrel Games. It's currently in Kickstarter, and it's uh, currently kicking butt in Kickstarter, actually. Uh, what Harbor is, it, it is, is it's a small game. It's what, what a lot of people are calling a micro game, but what uh, Tasty Minstrel Games calls a small box game. Um, it's, it's supposed to be a game that is going to be in a box about like this big, and uh, the idea is that you're going to be able to carry it everywhere you go. And uh, you're going to be able to bust it out and be able to play a game in 20, 30 minutes. Uh, and then, but, but still, even though it's a smaller game, to still pack the punch uh, that people are looking for with uh, their, their, their strategic, their, their kind of heavier uh, Euro type games. This is a game of, uh, of, of resource management and uh, card play, variable player powers, a lot of the stuff that you've probably uh, already seen in many, many, many uh, other games. But it has a cute little fantasy theme because the idea is it's called Harbor is because each person is uh, is in charge of like a warehouse or a warehouse shipping uh, company in this like uh, whimsical little fantasy town. And um, and the, the whole goal is, is that you're trying to you're trying to build up your business and you build up your business by buying and using uh, different buildings uh, that are in this town. So you're, I'm going to show you some of the art and stuff you're going to see that. Of course this is a prototype that I got. This isn't a complete and finished version um, but if you do go to the website obviously you're going to be able to see a lot of the really awesome things that they're they're doing with the game and how they're, uh, they're, they're how it's going to look uh, once the game is published. But Anyway, uh, let me show you how to play Harbor. It shouldn't take very long. It's a pretty easy game to learn. And then we'll go ahead and come back here and I'll tell you exactly what I think. All right, cool. Uh, Harbor, here we go. All right, this is the game of Harbor. Um, this is obviously, since it's a small box game, there isn't a lot to it. Uh, these are the different character sheets. I'll show those to you in here in just a little bit. Uh, the very small smattering of wooden components that you'll be using this small deck of cards, and this is the market card. Uh, to begin the game, uh, you randomly... Uh, there's four different types of resources in the game. Uh, stone, wood, fish, and livestock. And uh, you randomly place these in these locations for two, three, four, and five dollars. That's how much they are worth. And then these little um, barrels, these, these little... Uh, I was just going to say barrels. These crates below are very important. And I'll explain everything about the market board here in just a little bit. I don't want, I don't want to jump too far ahead. I want to show you how that works. Because that's really kind of like the one big way in this game that you can kind of screw with the other players and mess with them. And, and, and something I really like about the game. But anyway, so um, these are the different player boards. Uh, they are both um, like who you are as far as the character goes and your power of your original building, like in this particular power is you get uh, plus one fish commodity, plus one of any other type, or you can ship goods and then buy a building, because buying building is, is how you win this game. And then like there's some little background uh, uh, flavor text there, and then the special ability of your your person. So I include buying a building, uh, if you sell the good in the $2 market slot, uh, gain a dollar. So, you know, just little little powers that you have. And obviously these track the different uh, resources that you have. And so you'll put, you know, these, like this little, like yellow uh, is the livestock. Uh, that's what we determine. And so like as you gain livestock, you just move that up and down. And you have one for each of those different uh, things. Now, uh, there are four that actually have um, these actual like uh, color portraits on there. Uh, I got a ton more, and these are all like the weird stretch goal people uh, that are being pretty much unlocked right now. I know the Kickstarter is doing really well. But anyway, so each person gets one of these, has special power. Uh, pretty cool, actually, because a lot of these games, like resource collection, things like that, everybody's just basically the same. Nobody has a special power or whatever, and you just, uh, you're all kind of an even footing. And I'm always impressed by games that have variable player powers, and they, they are able to maintain uh, the equilibrium and uh, maintain the balance of the game. So, anyway, to begin the game, uh, you have these cards. These, these, these are the building cards. And once again, I, you know, it's like a, a fairly good stack of them. Um, these all have their pictures on them. I got 
a bunch that were unlockable stretch goals too. I'm not going to show you any of these real quick, but once again, they're like busting through all their stretch goals right now. So I think all the cards are going to be involved. But so you have like these, these cards and like the art is amusing to say the least, but here a, a fantasy lumber yard with an evil tree attacking people. I like the guy with the two saws anyway. <laughs> so, um, they have a dollar amount that it costs to buy uh, the building, the the victory point total that the building is worth at the end of the game, um, any special abilities that the the card will give, like a top hat, allows you to use other people's buildings without having to pay them something. Uh, normally, if you use somebody else's building that they own, you have to give them a good of your choice. Uh, but if you have a if you have a building that has a top hat, well, then you don't have to. And this particular building, when it's used, you get a lumber for every anchor that you have on the buildings that you own. And see, so like some buildings, so let me find one, like here, like the privateer ship, you can see it has an anchor. So that if you, if you had this building and you use this building, you'd get one, you know, and if you had two, you would get two and so on and so forth. Um, some buildings end up having two. Uh, this little warehouse here, when you ship goods to sell them, to be able to buy more buildings, normally you use up all of your goods, something I'll explain in just a little bit. But um, when you have a warehouse, you get to save. For every warehouse you have, warehouse you, have you get to save uh, one of your goods. And like in this, this one, particularly in the Masoner's Hall, you turn in one stone, and then you get one of each of the rest of them. And so, and some of them are more a little more complex, like here in the salvage yard, uh, the knoll running the salvage yard. I think that's kind of neat. But like five goods of, of any type equal, you know, two different goods of types of three each. So you turn in five goods, and then you get three of one and three of another. So you're trading in one thing for another for six. Uh, so it's one of those things. And you notice there's this little coin here. Uh, for every coin you have, when you buy a building, it costs one less. So if you had a coin and you're trying to buy this one, it would be uh, not $9, but $8 uh, to buy it. And uh, there's one other symbol, I think. No, actually, I think that's all the symbols. There's only four. And so and there you go. And so there's all these different buildings. So you shuffle this up to begin the game, and, and you put uh, you put a, a number of cards out equal to the number of players plus three. So if you're playing a, a four-player game, you put out seven, three players, six, two, five, so forth. So let's just say we're playing a three-player game. So we'll put out six of these. And so these are the basic buildings that exist and they're ready to be used and they're ready out, out there to be used. Now remember, each person has their own building as well right here. And you can use somebody else's building, as I said, but it does, you have to have to pay them a good of your choice uh, to be able to use it, unless you have a top hat, in which case you can use it for free. And so on your turn, uh, basically what you do is, oh, and I should say that when you begin the game, you get to pick any three uh, resources you want. You can, you know, not like three separate. You could say, I want three wood. You can have three wood, but then you have zero of the rest of them. But anyway, so what you do on your turn is you take your player marker and you say, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the Abbey. And like the Abbey, if you notice, it says uh, you get one of each uh, resource and then each opponent then gains one resource of their choice. So you're getting four, but you're allowing everybody else to gain one. And so you'd go there like so. And then the other people person goes, and they can't pick the same one that you're using. So like if you're if somebody else is on that spot, unless there is a, there's a, 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 a character that allows you to use a spot that somebody else is on. But so like, you know, you can you know, go to the salvage yard or whatever. And remember, you can always use the one that's on your board too. So like this person goes and they're gonna, you know, use this because they want that bonus fish or whatever. And so you go ahead and you use different parts and use different cards for their abilities and their powers. And eventually what you're gonna do is, what's, what's gonna happen is you're going to have more of these resources. And you're gonna look up here at this market card and you can see there's the different things there. I'm going to move these off here so I can show you this. Um, what you have, the only time you ever make money 
is, is when you ship goods. And you need to, one of the things about this game that you have to wrap your mind around is is that you never really get to save money. You know, it, whatever you spend, you just have to use up that turn. And anything that's in excess, you just lose. It's like to taxes or like bribes or whatever. And the same thing goes for resources. So if you have like two uh, resources of, say this was fish, this was the purple one. Um, if you have two of those, you can turn two of them for two bucks. If you have four of them, you don't get to get turn in four for four dollars. You know, you turn in two for two dollars, but you actually use up all of them to do, to do it. And the same thing goes for all of these. The the markers only go up to six. You can't ever have more uh, than six on there. Um, basically because, well, it wouldn't do you any good to have any more than six. And it kind of stinks because of the fact that once you, like, if you have six of whatever's worth five, you still spend all six to get um, the five dollars for turning that in. So it's some, that's one of the things about the market that um, is, is really tough to, to keep track of. But and, and also be cognizant of to understand exactly what your uh, stuff is worth and what when you know what uh, you can actually buy. So what happens is so like if you have four of this one's four dollars and you have three of this that's worth three dollars and two of this is worth two dollars. What you'll do is you'll 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 trade them all in. So let's just go ahead and put these back on like so. And and so that, that's how they are. So I'm going. See so what you do when you when you sell is I'm selling my stone, I'm selling my livestock, and I'm selling my uh, my my fish. So that's four dollars plus three dollars plus two dollars. So that's nine total dollars. Now what you do is you look out here and you try to find the thing that you want to buy. So for nine dollars you can't buy any of these three, but you could buy the privateer ship the salvage yard, or the blacksmith. Now, the blacksmith is worth six bucks if you wanted to buy that and put that in front of you. Um, and, you know, but if you did, you'd be wasting three dollars, which, you know, would make sure, like, why would you even use that one? You know, because of the fact that you'd be, you know, using it for nothing, basically. Um, but what, what, like, maybe, like, you wanted to get the salvage yard, so you go ahead and you you buy the salvage yard, and then it costs nine dollars, you know, nine dollars there, it's going to be worth eight victory points at the end of the game. If somebody decides to use it, they have to give you uh, a good to use it. And this is a pretty good card, actually. If you have, you know, any five goods can turn it into six. It's a pretty good card. So you place that in your in front of you along with, like, alongside your guy like that. And so now you have that in front of you. And you can use it. Now, the interesting thing that happens with the market is this is going to change. Now... The top one did not get spent, so that one doesn't matter. So what happens is, is you're going to start shuffling these um, into their new places. And so in this case, what happens is, is they will go that what will happen is, is this one will move to four, this one will move to three, and the top one moves back to two dollars. Now, what stinks about that is that like if somebody's been collecting stone and they, they're sitting on like four stone, they're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna next turn, I'm gonna turn in my stone for four bucks, and all of a sudden, bam, somebody uses it, it moves down to two dollars, and they're like, well, stink, <laughs> you know, or probably not stink, something a little more uh, flavorful, but they're, they, you know, they're upset because now all of a sudden their four stone is only, they thought there was gonna be with four, but now it's worth two. Now, some cards actually, like the Privateer ship here, actually have the ability to mess with the market. So if you go to this spot, you, you can shift one marker to the highest value and bump everything down accordingly. And then also, then you get to take one good of any type becomes two of another type. Pretty good card, actually. Pretty good building, if you will. So, like, if somebody had used that, like maybe the next person who was sitting on the other stone uses that spot, goes there, they immediately get to move that back up, and they can shove everything back like that. So there you go. So play continues until one person finally builds four buildings apart from the one that they got at the beginning. And then each person takes one more turn. And then you told the victory points that you got from all your buildings and whoever has uh, the most points wins. If there's a tie, you then go to the number of buildings. Because a lot of times uh, the person that, that triggers the end of the game is gonna have four and everybody else is gonna have three. Uh, some because it's, it's you know it, it's tough to like especially if that, that that end game gets triggered and all of your resources are down here and so you're never you don't really have the option of selling anything and so 
but like if you had bought like just recently we played a game where uh i had purchased like three really really uh big buildings like the tax office and the cartographers and the abbey i think you know, or something along those lines and so i had like 30 some points with those three buildings the person who got the last building actually ended up tying me but they had four buildings and because they had four buildings they ended up winning the game uh because of the fact that they got that tiebreaker but there you go. Uh, that's how you play the game of Harbor. It's it's a pretty straightforward game, but it's meant to be. It's this is, this is a game that's meant to be played in about 20, 30 minutes, especially after everybody knows the rules. But more about that uh, when I tell you exactly uh, what I think of the game. Once again, another game that... <laughs> That has Neko wafer looking uh, uh, chips. I, I don't think this is what the game is. Gonna, what these are going to look like in the in the final game. But um, I'm always reminded of those horrible, horrible, horrible candies, Neko wafers that, uh, for whatever reason, my mother and my grandmother just love. But that's fine. When I got back from Halloween, I'd be happy to let them have them just to clear out all the space for the good stuff. But anyway, I, I, I realized um, after I showed you how to play the game, I didn't mention. I I, I thought it was. It's probably apparent. But I, I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to skip past it. It, it you do refill uh, after somebody buys a building. You do pick another card off the deck and put it down. I didn't specify that uh, distinctly uh, when I was showing you how to play, but I, I, I thought that would be kind of obvious. But just in case, if you were wondering, uh, you do constantly refill the cards that are in the middle, so that you always have new options after other buildings are built. Um, so there you go. I mean, the game is very, very standard worker placement. I mean, you have your, you, 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 if you use the spot, nobody else can use it until you leave. You know, it's like, um, I, I do like the whole idea that like, if, if there's a good card out there, you kind of race to get it. So, um, you know, you, you can kind of like, uh, as long as somebody doesn't have that top hat, obviously they, they, then they have to pay something to use it. And that's kind of one of those neat things. I always like, um, owning, uh, something on the board and, and, and getting something out of somebody else uh, being forced to use it for their purposes. Um, like like Belfort, for example, had that. And I, and, I, and I enjoyed that aspect of the game. I enjoyed the aspect of this game. Probably the best part about this game. I mean, this game would, would be just a pretty standard uh, put your worker here, uh, collect your resources, turn your resources into something else, then turn those resources into victory points game. It would be very, very standard if, if, if it wasn't for the fact that it has uh, this this market board, and this market board is where the game really starts uh, clicking together, and it, it, it makes the it makes the game for me. Um, I I love uh, being able to screw with other people's uh, intentions in, in in any game that I play. And since this game is a totally open knowledge game, I mean, you can see everybody else's little sliding scale. You can see. Uh, how much of each uh, resource they have or whatever it it always um, I al I always purposely try to uh, get one step ahead of somebody else and alter the market it, it, either by purchasing something or by being lucky enough to have a card like the privateer ship um, that allows you to mess with it and it isn't just that card there there I know there are more cards like uh, hold on give me a second here I'll find one here in this deck here um, there, there's a card I know that allows you to see that one raises the price of, of the of, of the uh, the of, of a good that you choose. There's another one that lowers the price of a good that you choose. And so there's these things like or or like here this one like you can't really see that, but that the Trader's Guild you can see that in the bottom you're allowed to swap two markers and move them back and forth. So you can like mess with what somebody thought like oh great you know it's like you watch somebody they're working hard they're collecting their fish or whatever to get up to a big giant chunk of fish so they can trade it in for five bucks and all of a sudden it's worth two and and i and i like that i like that ability plus there's other cards as well that you get to mess with other people there's a tax card that allows you um uh, you get to demand other people to give you resources and things like that so it, it isn't one of those games where okay let's just all race and see who can you know be the most clever, if you will, uh, to get the right pieces in place and whatever. Um, it is a game that you do actually to able to, you know, put your finger in somebody else's pie and, and, and screw it up. And, and I, and I like that. I, I, I want to be able to mess with people. And, um, and so beyond all that, I mean, if, if it didn't have that, it would still be a fun enough game, I guess. And, and it just probably wouldn't be my cup of tea, uh, just because, um, 
Uh, for whatever reason, I, I my Euros need to have interaction for me to really kind of get into them. Or they have to be really, really convoluted and, and hurt my brain. And this is kind of a medium weight game. It isn't really all that... Uh, uh, super intense, sort of like that. Um, I don't, I don't see a lot of people getting uh, bent out, out of shape with some analysis paralysis with this one because uh, the actions are, are fairly straightforward. There is some problem solving that you have to figure out with how am I going to get these resources that I need so I can turn them into this and and that. And, but but as far as like solving that problem isn't as difficult in some of the heavier games I've played. But I mean that's but that's it isn't supposed to be a heavy game. It's supposed to be something light. It's supposed to be something quick, and it it does exactly that. It it's a great wind up game, uh, or or if you just if you in the mood to play a Euro game and you don't have a lot of time, you don't have a couple hours to bust out Russian railroads or seventeen hours so you can play a game of Madeira, um, then uh, you know uh, you. This is a perfect game. It's going to scratch that little uh, quick little strategy euro itch that you might have, and uh, and and it's going to satisfy that. I mean, I, I guess it, you know I I played this now at my work with the other uh, board gamer friends I have, and this is like one of those perfect things to be able to be play played while you're munching on your sandwich or whatever. Uh, and because of the fact that it's not going to be um, super. Uh, taxing on my on my melon i'm going to be able to enjoy my lunch going to be able to talk to my buddies and uh and then you know it's just a fun way to to pass the time for that 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 30 minute uh, little little uh chunk of gaming uh excitement that i'm looking for so there you go that's harbor uh it, go ahead and check out the kickstarter page check out the board game page uh at uh board game geek check out the page over at tasty minstrel games and uh take a look at it see if it's something you want to uh put on your shelf it is going to take up a lot of room on your shelf it's like i said it's gonna be one of those little tiny boxes that you see all the time now there's a lot of games coming out that are it seems like games are shrinking now they're just everything just just like um just, just like cell phones, they just kind of keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So, uh, yeah, I mean, but which is which is cool as long as the actual game uh, doesn't suffer in some way. I mean, if they're if the game is still challenging, the game is still fun, and the game still has enough weight uh, for me to actually feel uh, like I'm challenged, then I'm sure. Shrink them down, you know. <laughs> I don't care. Just, uh, just keep making the games fun. And Harbor is definitely a very, very fun game. So, there you go. Yeah. Uh, thank you as always for taking the time to watch this video. I greatly appreciate that. If you have any questions, uh, by all means, uh, post those, and I'll try to get to those as soon as I can. Uh, but until uh, next video time, uh, you have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right. Uh, bye bye now.